Hey everyone, either welcome back or welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I'm doing a fun video to end the year. So I'm actually going to do a rewind today. So before we get into it, time for the intro. <laughs> year has been probably one of the hardest years for all of us so I thought I would end this year with a little bit of a more fun video so I want to reflect on this year and everything that happened this year and talk about some of the biggest things on my channel and just share some of the biggest things that have happened on the channel this year talk about where we've come from January through to December so let's just get right into it The first thing I want to start with is YouTube actually sent me some stats from this year, which is really, really cool. I'm really, really thankful that my channel has grown as much as it has this year. When I started doing IIH content, I really didn't know how far I would be able to take it because it's a rare disease. And so you don't really know how many people are going to be interested in it. From the first video upload, which they don't specify is from 2020, but I'm guessing it's probably my entire channel. But from your first video upload until now, you, your fans have smashed that like button 475 times. The reason why I tell you to subscribe and like is because it helps us reach more people. And when we reach more people, we, re we have more awareness for IIH, which is a plus. Your community is growing. They've left 355 comments and shared your videos 397 times. So thank you to the people who have been sharing my content. And I really, really enjoy the interaction part of YouTube. So this is why I try and respond to as many comments as possible. In 2020, I gained 88 subscribers, which is unbelievable because it took me over a year. It took me about a year and three months, I believe, to reach my first 100 subscribers. And so that is just mind blowing. Also, we did really, really well on views. So not only did we have 6,971 views, but you guys have managed to watch my content for 20,776 minutes, which is just mind boggling. So I'll just do a quick calculation here. 346 watch hours. We received 311 likes this year. So that is a really, really big thing as well. So those are the stats that YouTube actually sent me. Now I want to get into kind of breakdown per month of the biggest things that happened this year with regards to IIH, even my channel. Although I think I'm going to leave the channel for the end of the video. In January, I had that horrible, horrible cold that I started the year off with. Along with that, it also didn't start off great because I had a sudden death in my family. My grandpa passed away suddenly on New Year's Day this in 2020. So my year started off absolutely terrible and just continued to be that way. There was some positives this year that I will be sharing throughout the rest of this video, but it's been a pretty rough year, I think, for everybody. On the 31st, my channel also turned one. So... That's a big thing to reach a year milestone of doing content on YouTube. I absolutely love making content on here. I have my issues with social media, but to have a platform where I can share how I'm doing with IIH and be able to connect with others who have IIH and to hear that the content is helpful from so many of you is a huge bonus. So to all of you who have been watching the content, I just thank you for all of that and 
for the feedback and I'm glad that you find the content helpful. I actually, I, as I say all the time, I started this to update my family because it's better to do videos than it is to write novels on Facebook. But this channel turned into a way that I can raise awareness about IIH and what it's like to live with the condition, show what it's like to live with the condition, update on how I'm doing with the condition, show that, you know, weight loss helps, but might not be 100%. Living with IIH and treating IIH is not as simple as what the internet makes it out to be. So it's just some of the biggest goals that I have with the channel and I'm happy that it's showing that through the through the channel to at least some degree. The biggest things in February, dealing with a lot of symptoms and a lot of these symptoms due to weather changes. So I started figuring out the weather changes were one of the ways that I was having an increase in symptoms. I actually had a different workout schedule in February. So I was doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this is because I was feeling a lot better during the during that month than what I do right now. So I had a lot more energy and a lot less headaches, I think. And I don't remember in February pushing through anything that was worse than what I'm going through right now, but I'm starting to wonder maybe if there has been a little bit of an increase in symptoms. So it's something that I need to watch and pay attention to because my doctor needs to be aware of it if it is a thing. In March, there was that sudden change in life because the pandemic restrictions started to come in. I was really, really struggling with dizziness. I was also, at this point, one of the biggest things that happened this year was weaning off of medications. And I expressed my concern about the potential of coming off of medications and what I was nervous about. And Ultimately, when I had my medication reduced in April, it went a lot smoother than what I expected it to. So the first dose was reduced from 1,000 milligrams a day to 500 milligrams a day. So that was a wonderful, positive thing that happened throughout this year, this past year, was that I was starting to wean off medication. Now I'm even closer to being off medication and likely will be off medication probably not long after I see my ophthalmologist in January. So during the period of May, which I've started to notice this, spring and fall seem to bring an increase in symptoms. And again, probably due to weather changes, but I noticed that spring and fall tend to have a lot of increase in symptoms. At this point, I also lost confidence that I could tell the difference easily between IIH and migraines. I started realizing just how similar they are, but how different they are too. So the fact of having to deal with IIH and migraines this year and not really knowing what the difference is between the two, like symptom wise has been really, really a struggle and really, really frustrating to deal with because you don't know which one you're actually dealing with. In June, I started doing the updates from the trails as I do every summer and really, really enjoyed that. We spent a lot of time out on the trails this year. Part of that, because of the pandemic, that was one of the ways I was getting out. In June, I found out that my ophthalmologist appointment had been postponed, one of the effects of the pandemic, which I talked about in my video about COVID-19. It made me concerned because I had just received that reduced medication and didn't know how it was going. And they were really relying on those eye exams to know exactly how I was doing with my IIH. It was a little bit nerve wracking there during the summer for that reason this year, because I didn't really know how I was actually doing because I wasn't getting my eyes tested at all. In July on the channel, we had a major change. So we started doing vlogs once a month. I really, really enjoy doing the, these vlogs for multiple different reasons. It's nice to show kind of what actual life is like with IIH. August seen a lot of changes on the channel. There was a change in the look to the thumbnails. I introduced a new intro into the channel, that more generic intro that is at the beginning of that was at the beginning of this video is the intro from August. I actually even have end screen. So if you watch any of my content to the last 
Well, I have them between usually 17 and 19 or so seconds from the end of the video. You'll see the end screen pop up with my social media information. A video will pop up showing previous video and then the video that is currently playing will be in, in the box beside it. September I had my optometrist appointment. I found out my eyes were good. It was a huge weight lifted off my shoulders and I got my glasses fixed. So for those of you who don't know, yes, I do actually wear glasses. You might know if you've looked at some of my other thumbnails. The reason why is I don't wear glasses normally because of that, that right there. You can see the ring light reflecting off of my glasses. So that's why I don't wear them when I'm filming. But I wear them pretty much every other time because it does help reduce the amount of headaches that I'm having. So that was nice to get my glasses fixed and was a huge relief hearing that my eyes were okay. September also marked two years since I had been diagnosed officially with IIH. But it had been two years in, on the end of January of 2020 since I first started experiencing symptoms. So yes, I had a very, very long period before I was diagnosed, which you can watch that in the diagnosis story. In October, I was having a much harder time with symptoms. I noticed they were much stronger and I had started missing my workouts completely too at that point. So that was, that was a good sign that things were really, really rough. In November, I really started to notice that the isolation because of the pandemic was really starting to affect me. And it may have started a little bit earlier than that, but November is when it really, really became noticeable because that's when the colder temperatures really started to hit. A major reason too is I spent so much time out on the trails because of it was a way to get out of the house. And now that it was cold, not really a way to get outside suffer on really, really nice days. Another big thing that happened in November was my medication was again reduced from 500 milligrams to 250 milligrams. I don't know if I said this in the original update video that month, but I had the option of actually going off the medication completely, but I decided to stay on just one 250 milligram tablet. I likely probably again will be off medication come the new year. So we'll have to just wait and see how that goes. For December, I just strongly recommend that you watch the latest update because there's not really much that has changed since I recorded that update until now because I'm filming it on the same day because of wanting to take that break. So just again, some of the biggest changes that happened with regards to my content this year has been reaching 100 subscribers, reaching that 10,000 view mark and also starting up Facebook page and putting my content onto IGTV. Let me know if you guys have a YouTube channel, what your biggest accomplishments were for 2020. Share them down below in the comment section. If you don't have a YouTube channel, let me know what some of the biggest things that happened for you this year in 2020 that maybe are more positive, what you're thankful for this year. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave one down below. If you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell and turn your notifications to all so you never miss another video. If you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to like and follow. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and share. And as for now, that's it for today. Bye everyone.